Hey guys, it's Anusha here. Now, I don't know if a lot of you guys are big fans of snail mail, but personally, I love it. Uh, I haven't sent real mail in a while, but when I was in college, I used to send mail and postcards to my friends back home because I was living in Europe. And there was something so nice about taking the time to write out a letter by hand and decorating the envelope with like, you know, stickers and washi tape and everything. I love sending postcards, but what I loved even more was receiving them. I think that's probably why I like online shopping so much now. It's just like, you know, getting presents in the mail, which is really great. But why am I bringing this up? Well, today we're going to be talking about postcards, specifically sending postcards to art directors. Now, in my last video, I talked quite a bit on how to start your illustration career and how to contact art directors and just like the different ways to let them know that you exist and are looking for work. The one thing that I didn't get to talk about was postcards. Now, this is something that I haven't really done personally, but it is something that's very common for illustrators to do. And especially before social media, like this was the way that people would promote their work and get their work seen by people before, you know, Instagram and emails and everything like that. Sending mailers is very effective, but the reason that I don't do it is one, I have a pretty extensive online social media presence, so I don't really need to anymore. Um, I'm also just a little bit too busy for it, but I will share mailers at conventions and also my agency sends mailers for me. Now, of course, you can send an art director an email like I talked about in my last video, uh, but here are some reasons why you might send a postcard instead. Oh wait, actually, let's do a pros and cons list. An art director will instantly see your work. Um, they might have like hundreds of emails every week and they might not get the chance to look through all of them, but with mail, they are definitely going to look through every single one of them. Um, you know, no clicking on any links, just opening their mail and blammo. Sending postcards is a good way to stand out from the crowd. Like besides sending postcards, you could send a lot of pretty creative stuff. You know, you could do fun things with the paper, art and envelopes and things, send things besides postcards, which will get into later as well. Like a lot of people, art directors might have an inbox full of unopened email, like me. Hmm. If you send an email, you might not hear a reply back for a really long time, or even worse, it just might not get opened. But like I said, a postcard definitely will. People love opening mail. It's like receiving a present with art in it. <laughs> Some art directors actually prefer getting real mail rather than email. In most cases, an art director in their office will have like some sort of bulletin board or cork board. Whenever they get a mailer that they really like, they'll pin it up on that cork board and then your art is just always there in front of them. It's not gonna be in like a file hidden on their computer or in their browser. It's just always gonna be in their office and they're gonna think of you. Now let's talk about the cons. Obviously, this is gonna cost a lot more than sending a free email. You're gonna have to pay for the production of these mailers as well as the shipping cost and if you're mailing to an international art director um you know these shipping costs can get a little bit pricey and if you're living in a country where your postal system isn't really that great then you know there's a chance that they're never gonna get your mail sending a postcard is also going to take a lot more time than sending an email you're going to take the time to design the card you know wait for your order to arrive spend the day writing out or printing out the addresses and then going to the post office itself and then even after doing all that work and paying all that money there's a chance that you might not even get considered by the art director just like emails they're going to be getting hundreds of submissions every week and they just can't keep all the postcards that are sent to them they're definitely gonna look at each and every one, but the majority of them, if they don't fit the kind of style that they're looking for, or if the work isn't up to their standards, then it's gonna get tossed. With all that in mind, let's talk about what should actually go on the postcard. There are a lot of ways to format your postcards, but there are a couple of things you should keep in mind. Generally, on the postcard, you have the front and back. On the front, you wanna have your art, you know, your best piece of work, just filling up the entire page. And then on the back, you should have your uh, you should keep it mostly blank, uh, like a postcard, and then have your contact information. So that would be your name, um, email address, your portfolio link, maybe social media links, um, who you're represented by, and um, what kind of work you do. Like you could mention that you are children's books or editorial or whatever your um, specification is. I would also fit in your name and your portfolio link at the front as well. Um, where the where the main artwork is just because like if the art director does like your work and they pin it on that bulletin board then um, 
you do want to have your name on there so that when they see it, they know who drew it. If you know the art director, you've met them previously or whatever, you could also include a handwritten note, like a personal note at the back for them. Um, especially, you know, if you've met them before, then you can mention where you've met them before, like any connection that you guys have or any conversation points that you talked about. If you have multiple styles, you could include you know all of your styles that you've worked on on the front like instead of having one giant image you could have maybe two or three um, but i personally i wouldn't overdo it it's um i do prefer having like one big image at the front and then maybe a spot illustration at the back um like personally i do have multiple styles so i might include like the full color at the front and then like a black and white thing at the back but generally you know i don't like it to be too cluttered so if you do have multiple styles that you like you really want to focus on maybe it's best if you just have two separate postcard designs that you send out i would add that it's important that your card is designed well as well like you could have like the most beautiful postcard in the world but if the typography is bad like if it's arranged poorly if it's like hard to read it's not going to do you any favors so i think i do have decent design sense like as an artist you kind of assume that like you are a good designer as well but like that's generally not always the case so i do like to get a second opinion on any postcards that i do as well as my portfolio and things like that by someone who actually has graphic design experience so you can get these cards printed at a number of places you could if you're not printing too many, you could just print it at home on some good quality cardstock. You could get them professionally printed at a local printer, Staples, Cat Print, anything like that. Personally, I love Vista Print. I use them for my business cards as well. I think that they are good quality, reasonably priced, and they usually have some kind of sale going on that I like to take advantage of. Um, so that reminds me, if you're getting postcards, make sure you get business cards as well. Actually, here is my business card, if you guys have never seen it. I hope you can see it okay. Um, I don't have a lot of postcards. I'm going to show you some postcards examples in a second that I've done. Um, but I guess it could look something like this, where you have like your big old art at the front. I've got my name over here. And then, whoops. And then I have, you know, my name, what I do, portfolio, email, social media links. I hope you guys can see this. The two postcards that I do have on me right now, uh, these are probably not the best examples, but like I said, I don't really have a lot of experience on this and I will just show what I do have. This is one that my publisher printed out for my book, Bilal Cooks Thou, um, has my name on it, cover title. So you could use an example of like a book that you've published before as you know your artwork. On the back, because the book is based on like cooking and everything, it, they included a recipe for doll, which I thought was really cute. You, if you don't want to stand out, you could do something like that that's related to your book. But the other example that I have, and this is one that I use for conventions. This is one that I used last year. It has my name, um, social media, website <laughs> but basically this is my upcoming books that i had last year so i've got a couple over here and some over here as well it's again not the best postcard design but i just wanted to show what i have on me right now in terms of getting the, the name of the person that you're sending this postcard to you can check their social media accounts, like on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Uh, they might have mentioned their mailing address. Sometimes they'll have it written on their bio or in one of their posts. Mm. The information might be on the company's website, like on the submissions page. Uh, if you know the company's address, you know, you can just Google their headquarters or whatever. Uh, you can just try mailing it there and then putting in attention to, and then the art director's name, um, you know, they might end up getting it. If you're interested in working in publishing, especially like children's book publishing, there's this, organize, there's this organization called SCB, SCBWI, or the Society of Children's Books Writers and Illustrators. Really cool organization. I am not part of it yet. It's something I keep putting off, but I do want to. It's this international organization. Um, you can easily sign up and become a member for like an annual fee. I believe that it is cheaper for students as well. They have like a discount for that. Um, 
And they provide like a ton of resources for writers and illustrators, like local workshops and meetups and awards. And they have, what's the word? They have, they have chapters <laughs> like in different areas of the country. They have ones across the world. So you might actually have one in your country if you're outside of the US. Anyway, if you're a member, one of the resources that they have is called The Book, uh, The Essential Guide to Publishing for Children. Again, it includes a ton of resources, like a list of agencies that you can submit to, um, how to self-publish, as well as a list of mailing addresses for art directors, which is really cool. If you really want to stand out, you don't have to stop at sending postcards. You could send uh, calendars, an art book, magnets, bookmarks, stickers, enamel pins, buttons. Like You could be as creative as you want with it. If you're sending something unique, they'll definitely remember you. And if it's something functional, they might use it daily. Like uh, at a convention, this is not something I mail, but at a convention, I was selling mugs and an art director bought it and they told me that they use it every day, which is pretty cool. I think this is a good time to share some enamel pins that I've made. Cute, right? Again, I have not sent these out to art directors, but maybe I should. Of course, these are way more expensive options, uh, especially when there's a chance that all of this stuff is going to get thrown away in the end anyway. So these might be better reserved for a handful of your top clients that you want to submit to instead of sending it to everyone on your list. Oh, by the way, by the list, I mean what I talked about in my previous video, uh, basically the client list of everyone you want to work with and their email addresses and so on and so on. Anyway, I hope this was helpful for you guys. This is definitely a shorter video, uh, but let me know if this is something you prefer. I can do like these little mini topics every once in a while. Um, I hope, because I'm hoping that like the long videos you don't get bored by. But yeah, thank you so much. If you do have a postcard that you've made, please show me. I always like looking at them and seeing how creative people can be. Um, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I'm still trying to grow this channel and I do want to make this as great as it can be. And I would really appreciate your support. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I am at foxville underscore art. And I think that's it. All right, guys, have a good day. Bye.